in the 18th century. You're sick. You need to go to the drugstore. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to the apothecary. Today we are at the Spanish Military Hospital Museum in St. Augustine, Florida, and I have Kim with me, and she's going to tell us all about the apothecary, the drugstore of the 18th century. That's right. Now the apothecary was the person who turned plants into medicine. We've actually been doing this for over 5,000 years. And the apothecary, he didn't go to, um, to university like the physician did. Instead, since the time of the Greeks, he, he became an apprentice. And he mm -hmm. usually started around the age of 10 to 15, learning his trade. So that by the time he was an adult, he knew it pretty well. And it was the same for our apothecary, Raymond de Fuentes. But he was special. He wasn't just an apothecary, he was a gardener. He actually grew almost every plant he needed right here on site. He had a little garden right out back. They made tinctures, mm -hmm. they made teas, jellies, syrups, um, poultices. Salves, okay. ointments? Yes, exactly. Now, they did the different things with different plants. And I have some here that were used quite often. I'll let you pick one and I'll tell you about it. Well, let's start at this end. What have we got here? This one's got, uh, it says, it's, it looks like it's a lavender. It is lavender. It's lavender buds. Now, it wasn't used medicinally, but it was used to clean with. Mm. Now, we've already talked about the lavender and how right. they burned it in the escafetta. But see these buds? Mm. Here, just mm. take the lid off and take a smell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Smells great, yes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And the root word lava actually means to wash. Mm -hmm. So while they were here, somebody came up with the bright idea that it's going to be hygienic. And it is. So they would add those buds to boiling water and they used them to clean with. Not only is it hygienic, it is antimicrobial, just like silver. And they didn't even know it. No, they didn't okay. know it. Now that is Yarrow, mm. and Yarrow does have a nickname, mm -hmm. Wounded Warrior Wart. You see, in the beginning they took the dried leaves right out onto the battlefield and stuffed them into the soldier's wound to keep him from bleeding to death. Now this worked because Yarrow is a powerful coagulant. Mm. They didn't know it, they were also helping to fight infection, just like silver, vinegar, and lavender, it's antimicrobial as well. So uh, this the, looks like uh, dried berries. I'm going to guess, now I've, I've seen these, these kind of grow close. We have these out in our field. I would say it would be a um, uh, rose hip. What do you think? Yes, very good. It is the rose hip, the fruit of the rose. Mm -hmm. And you are holding a nutritional powerhouse. It actually has twice the vitamin C of an entire orange. Mm -hmm. And if you grow in, a, if you're in some place like Indiana where oranges do not grow, that's this is what gonna this be is. Good. What you have. This is going to be better for you anyway because it doesn't have any sugar in it, All right. and it's much smaller, much easier to use. That's a dried one. You can carry them around in your pocket. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, make a tea out of it. Yes, that was what Mr. De Fuentes made. He didn't just make teas. He also made jellies and syrups. Sure. Mm -hmm. Gave it to his patients. Most of them did recuperate very quickly. Oh. Amazing, lots of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So this one, let's see what we've got. It, they look like flowers, and you said uh, this is calendula officialis. So mm -hmm. this, everything's labeled here with uh, the Latin name because yes. you don't want to confuse it with the um, what's the modern name. Is that um, marigold family? Yes, it is in the marigold family, and the part they used was the pretty yellow flowers. Okay. They crushed them, made creams and ointments for their patients with burns, cuts, and abrasions. It works very well, and we are still using it today. We put it into creams for eczema and psoriasis. You can also find soaps with it in it, and it's very good for your skin. Amazing. So here's one, it looks like um, little flower buds, and they're kind of falling apart here. Yes, this is chamomile. Mm -hmm. Chamomile was used when somebody um, had an upset stomach or they were having trouble sleeping. Now, they usually gave that along with this one. This is white willow bark, okay. the bark of the willow tree. This was used to relieve pain and reduce a fever after surgery. Okay. That's because they didn't like to use the laudanum. They knew those opiates were highly addicting and could cause an overdose, but it did often cause an upset stomach. Now, today we still use it. 
we extract the salicylic acid from it, which is known as? Aspirin. Yes, very good. Uh, let's see. Maribim vulgar. Something something very vulgar. I don't know. What is this? <laughs> I don't know. I think that somebody put the wrong label on that. <laughs> this is whorehound. Okay, whorehound. Yes. Now, I've whorehound. heard of whorehound cookies or uh, candy. Candies, right? yes. And they use those candies here uh -huh. as cough drops. This was used for patients with colds. Mm -hmm. uh, it would help with um, congestion, mm -hmm. a sore throat, and a cough. Now, first they would give them teas and syrups. Mm -hmm. Then the candies came later to take home. Right. Yes, and you can still find whorehound candies out there today for those very symptoms. Mm -hmm. Ah, that uh, is valerian root. Really? Yes. Okay. Now, valerian root is just as good a sleep aid as chamomile, but it's also a potent sedative. That's why it was one of the herbs that they added to the laudanum to make that patient calm, sedate, and drowsy during surgery. Mm -hmm. It worked very well, plus the next day, it made the patient groggy, and he had a little amnesia. Well, he remembered hardly go. anything of the surgery, which Can't is a go good wrong, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially if it didn't manage to make him drowsy. <laughs> So uh, this, this is cinnamon. Now, what's it doing here? Now, cinnamon was used when um, somebody had high blood pressure. Of course, okay. they didn't know about what high blood pressure was, but sure. they used this to relieve the symptoms, mm -hmm. the dizziness, the blurred vision, and it does work good. People still use it today for the very same thing. Okay. I use it for that, as well as lowering my blood sugar. And we have cloves? Yes. This is one of my favorites. Now we mostly use cloves today for cooking, mm -hmm. but back then they would extract the oil okay. and use it for dental work. Another nice thing about it, it smells just like Christmas. Yeah, sure. Isn't that nice? Now it works very well mm -hmm. and we're still using that today. So oil, you take that oil of cloves and you just put it- Just rub it, it right on your gums and your teeth. Okay. This is cochineal. It looks like little, little uh, black crystals, yes. yes. Now this has no medicinal value, but it was highly prized by the Spanish because it was their number two um, export, second only to silver. Mm -hmm. They discovered it in 1519 when they went to Mexico. Now if you've ever seen pictures of the Aztecs, you're gonna notice their clothing was very brightly colored. Okay. And this is how they got it that way. Yeah. It's very easy to use. All you do is put them in your mortar and pestle and crush them and you end up with Looks like, uh, a like fabric chili dye. pepper or something. Yes, no, it's a fabric it's dye. It's a fabric dye. Yes, okay. uh, you'll notice that it's very bright red. Mm -hmm. It was called mm -hmm. carmine sure. red. Guess who used the most of this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was the British. That's okay. how they got those red coats. Okay. But mm -hmm. there's more than one color you can get out of it. Mm. If you look on the pestle, sure. you're gonna see blues, blues and purples. Yeah. That's because I have salt in my skin and I touch it all day long. Wow. If you add lemon juice instead though, you can get oranges and yellows. Now you know why it was so popular. Now let me guess, it's made out of a seed or something. It's made out of this. This is the cochineal that they use. Mm -hmm. But it's not a seed. Mm. It's not even a plant. It's a bug. They used it from the cochineal beetle. They got it in Mexico. This is the same thing the Aztecs So they're bugs, using. they're ground up bugs. They're ground up bugs, yes. Mm -hmm. And they didn't just use it for fabric dye. They also used it for making brightly colored paints, cosmetics, and food. Mm. Yes, and we're still using it today for th all three of those things, including food. So the cochineal bugs are local, they're from Mexico, right? Yeah, they're um, from Mexico. What about all these other things? Is it he having the doctor here, the pharmacist here, having to import lots of things no, from no, far away? No, no, just two things, lavender and mm -hmm. opium that we know of. Everything else he actually grew right here mm -hmm. in his garden. Mm -hmm. That was so a pretty big garden. So lavender doesn't grow in the south, maybe? It doesn't like to grow in Florida. Oh, okay. So uh, the means of preparation here, we talked about uh, tinctures and, you know, well, how are the different Okay, ways? how they would work. Now, if it was, if they had it fresh, mm -hmm. then of course they're gonna use it to make a tea. Okay. Now, if they need it concentrated or they only have the dried flowers, then they're gonna use a tincture. Now, mm -hmm. to make this, they just took the dried flowers, they put them in a jar like this one, and then they would add a liquid. Mm -hmm. Now, they had four choices. They had ether, water, 
alcohol and vinegar. Mm. Alcohol, of course, was one of the most popular, sure. and vinegar coming in second. Hmm. They didn't use the ether too much because they had a tendency to pass out. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't understand why they were passing out because this was before 1846. Mm -hmm. Now, they also made jellies, especially with this. Sure. You just soak it in water and give it. Now, they had poultices. Mm -hmm. um, for example, they used mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. If the um, whorehound wasn't working to break up, up that congestion, then they would make a poultice from mustard seeds and an oil stick it right on the chest, and that would break anything up. Now in the 1960s, we stopped using the mustard seed because people were leaving it on too long and actually getting first and second degree burns mm -hmm. on their chest. And these other ones that you could make an ointment with them if you just mix them in yes, with an oil that or would, Yeah, wax. that's how you do it. You could, you could soak it in oil and infusion. That's what they did with mm -hmm. the calendula. Um, of course, tea was always made with um, mm -hmm. the chamomile. And now the valerian was made into a tincture with alcohol to add to the laudanum before surgery. That was mostly what it was used for. If they just wanted their patient, you know, drowsy, then they would use the chamomile. We also have electaries and boluses. What about pills? Um, this is before the time of this. Okay. This hospital, but I do happen to have a pill roller here. Okay. This was in the mid 1800s, the mm -hmm. 19th century, when they started using it. They would take their medicine, roll it into a ball, then a sausage shape, just like you do with your play doh. Probably it would look about like yeah. this. They would just lay it right down on there turn over and use the flat side like a rolling pin and roll it back and forth until they had the thickness they wanted, mm -hmm. usually about this thick. Mm -hmm. Then he would turn it over. See how it's grooved here? Sure. Stick it right on there. And then they would have 10 to 12 equally dosaged pills. Another interesting thing, this was what Mr. DeFuentes would use when he had a patient with a broken limb or um, an amputation. Mm -hmm. Now you may have heard that the gladiators had some of the densest bones on the planet, okay. but they were vegetarians. How did that happen? Mm. That's because the physician Galen, the same one who made up the uh, four humors of the body theory, he would take these antlers, they're just deer antlers, mm -hmm. throw them into a fire, get them into ash. Then he would take the ash and make like an oatmeal, a gruel, and feed it to them. Doesn't it's sound. loaded with calcium. Probably <laughs> mm -hmm. didn't taste very good, but it made those gladiators very strong. And Mr. De Fuentes did the same thing. Uh, so we've got a giant mortar and pestle. Yes, I love this. I would like to take this home with me. Now this was how they would crush their yes. flowers or anything that they needed to be crushed up. They just took their little pestle and pounded it until they got it the way they wanted it. I still do this today when I'm cooking, but mine is much smaller than that. Yeah, well, if you're you know, creating a lot of, of uh, something, and they probably did it in batches, large batches, where you want something um, to smell. They tried to be as fresh as possible. Really? Yeah. Um, you have to remember that this is an antique that we sure. bought. This probably would have been used in an apothecary shop maybe in the 1920s yeah. when they're using making big batches mm -hmm. so they can mm -hmm. make the pills right. and give them out or capsules, I would say, mm -hmm. but not here. Everything was done fresh, as fresh as could possibly be done. Okay, if it good. was a dried out, then they're gonna make a tincture. This is how they made it last for a long time mm -hmm. because the alcohol, the vinegar, yeah. not, they're gonna keep it from spoiling sure. and it's also gonna make it more um, concentrated so mm -hmm. they don't have to give as much. For example, with the laudanum, they just gave, them, gave it to them yeah. drop by drop when they had a huge smile on their face, they knew they had enough. Right. So we're here in the Spanish military hospital where the apothecary was. It was just for the military? Uh, no, not completely for the military. Um, Mr. De Fuentes did have um, his apothecary, his own building. That mm -hmm. was building three where he made his teas and tinctures. Now they could come to him, mm -hmm. but also on the weekend, he was out in that plaza with his wares, okay. with his tinctures and his teas, 
they would come to him, they would tell him what the doctor said, and then he would mix something up for them right then and there. So all these items they grew here, was he getting them from you know other people in town or was he growing them? No, or? he was growing them himself. He had quite the garden out back. Mm -hmm. It was huge. And there were only two things that we know of that he did have to import, mm -hmm. lavender and opium, of course. Yeah, it's uh, a truly amazing what just the simple things, things mm -hmm. that grew in a garden and the item and the things that they could do for people. We, we tend to think that, it, you know, we have to have some very, pay a hundred dollars a pill or something to yeah. have something be efficacious when that apparently... Yeah, any pill control. out there, almost any pill, you can find a plant that can do the job just as well, maybe better, without the toxic side effects. Mm -hmm. Like the willow bark. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still using that today to make aspirin. Foxglove is used mm -hmm. today to make digitalis. Sure. And there are lots of other plants that we are still using today. It's just that somebody else is doing the work and then you just have to take the pill. Mm -hmm. Kim, thank you so much for this amazing information about these medicines from the 18th century. We have so much to learn about what medicine was like in the 18th century. What has gone right with our medicine today and what is gone wrong with our medicine today? It's truly fascinating to understand the roots of our modern medicines. Uh, I am always astounded when I dig into medicine and have so much fun with that. So uh, thank you again. If Again, if you want a wonderful experience learning about 18th century medicine and what it was like, uh, especially here in Florida, in this Spanish area, so much Spanish influence and truly a, a different kind of experience than you are going to get in other parts of the country, uh, come to the Spanish Military Hospital Museum in St. Augustine, Florida, and you will have a wonderful experience. You're going to love it. Thank you so much for coming along today on this visit, and thank you, Kim, again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.